to play the game. You have that gut feeling inside of you to make a difference. We won't do it in general. We just jump right into it. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. That, well, you know that my, the reason I'm in in woodworking and in the DIY handy space is because of the loss of my husband. Yeah. Before he passed away, he was a maintenance man. He knew how to fix and build absolutely everything. So my involvement generally was like I would come up with an idea and he would build it. But it was more like if he couldn't hold something, I was called into the room to help hold it or help hold the tape measure. And then I knew to get out of the way and just <laughs> let him work and don't talk. Cause he was, and now that I'm doing things, I know that like how you're in a zone and you've got to focus. So it wasn't until his accident that I was left having to fill in the gap and figure out how to pick up these things and how to to use his tools and fix things around the house and that's how i got my start it was not out of choice it was out of necessity necessity so is it is yeah. it um I'm, and i'm sorry to hear about uh, your husband passing Thank away you, you said it was a, a accident was it like a vehicle accident it was he was actually oh, it was in 2004 it was on our son's uh fourth birthday i'm sorry 2008 um our son's fourth birthday actually the day that it happened and it was during the time when gas prices were crazy high mm -hmm. and he had a motorcycle um actually that i had bought him for his 40th birthday it was like a family motorcycle that was being passed down i bought it from the family and he rode with his dad and his uncles and it was like a guy thing well it was during the time that the gas prices were like four dollars a gallon or whatever and he was riding his bike more yeah. to try to save gas oh. money. So he was on his way to work and a lady, it just was a bad intersection where there were a lot of accidents and the lady just was, she was probably in a hurry to get to work too and came through and hit him. So um, that, that was a horrible day that's burned in my mind, but that was obviously a turning point in my life. It was a, right. a sink or swim kind of moment and I had to figure it out. I had to navigate and and pick up the pieces. Yeah. Really. And and you know, find my new normal. Yeah. And how long ago did you say that that was? Twelve years. Twelve years. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm so sorry. It's thank it's you. A, it's amazing to me how like you can go through like so much adversity and then when you're going through it, you're just like man, how am I going to get out of this? And you feel like almost like being at the, the bottom of a well with no way to get out. And then all of a sudden one day you're just like, oh my God, I'm, I'm here. Like I could like, cause that's happened to me before where I'm just like in like, feeling like I'm in a tunnel. And then all of a sudden yeah. I'm just like, I can't believe that I've actually made it to this point. And yeah. um, that's even more, of a reason like why I wanted to talk to you because I there's so many people that are hurting right now yeah. and they're trying to figure out which way to go yeah and if there's like one piece of advice that you can give like some of the people that are listening um what do you what's your biggest sticking point in that moment like or what was your biggest sticking point in that moment for you um, well, I would say that you're feeling the emotions you're feeling like for me, where there's great love, there's obviously going to be great loss. So I allowed mm. myself the first year, I felt like a zombie. Really, I just was going through the motions, I had to focus on one day at a time. It was just survival mode. So I think that everyone's looking for a magic fix. Yeah, or to take a magic pill. I feel like for me, I wouldn't take any, not to say that if, if that's what you decide, that's fine. But for me, I'm like, I don't want to take anything. I want to, I got to work through it, feel what I'm going to feel. And one day at a time, I just focused one day at a time, one day at a time. For me, honest to goodness, it was my faith. It was my faith that I know carried me through. It was a deep believing and knowing knowing that we are here for a purpose we're here yes. for we each have a reason so i i felt like i had an even even greater sense of purpose after that which not that i'm 
will ever be happy about what happened, but I do right. like the person I am now. And it wouldn't have happened because of that. So I think that Gary's purpose must have been fulfilled. It was time for him, to, and as much as I don't like it, it was time for him to go, right. to go home. And it, I still have a job to do. So I knew I couldn't give up. And I felt like the best way for, to honor his life was to find my purpose, do good for others, and have the best life I could in, in his in memory. Wow. So I, th I guess that's my takeaway. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm Italian. I talk a lot. So no, my, no, my I love it. That's why we're here. I want to hear you. <laughs> hey, all of the people that listen to me, they they get tired of listening to me. I want to hear you talk as much okay. as you want. I promise. <laughs> so I, my best, the, the takeaway from all of that is that we all have a purpose. We all have a purpose. We need to once you realize that, like you, you, you're driven, like you can't give up. Yeah. So I guess just to know that and to know that, that there is God and, yeah. and we're here for, it's not to punish us. It's for a reason. And I'm yeah. sorry. I, I no, 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 it's okay. Too. No, no, me too. me too. Me too. Me <laughs> too. No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm there with you. I, I agree. I agree. Um, I, I think that's going to be helpful for a lot of people because, yeah. Times are really hard right now. You got, yeah. you know, this thing with the coronavirus, you got people dying, right. you got people um, losing their jobs. Yeah. The, these fires. I, I mean, I had to turn, I turned my phone off um, yesterday because there's so many people that are, you know, having these rightfully having these emotions. And I'm one of those people, I just like, absorb it. And I'm just like, this is too much for me because, you know, you literally yeah. see the flames and I just thought about all I can think about was they might not be able to see it now, but this is going to make them stronger. There's going to be something that's right. going to come out of this. That's just going to magnify what talent they have or bring, bring up some talents that they didn't even know that, that they had. And I thought about you last night and I'm just like, I'm so glad that we're talking today because I think hearing your story uh, will, will help a lot of people. And uh, this morning when we woke up, it was like yellow, right? Because I live in uh, Washington State. So right now, oh, okay. uh, yeah, so everything is everything that's coming from pretty much uh, Oregon and California is like coming this way. And my kids, they were like, oh my God, they're, they're freaking out. My youngest one is freaking out. She's like, it's yellow outside. I've been looking at the news and they start freaking out. And I'm like, girls, we are going to be okay. Right. Mm -hmm. We're going to be okay. Like we are going, no matter what happens, we're going to figure it out. Trust me. And they're like, okay, daddy, we trust you. But yeah. it's, but I had to, the night before I had to, not because I was worried, but I had to kind of come to a revelation like within myself for other people. So it's like finding the strength through other people. And I'm just like, you know, we got this, we got this. We and that's know. what, yeah. And that's what I, that's why I'm incredibly inspired by you because one, I was just like you, like, I, I don't know my way around a shop. Like I said before, I don't <laughs> even know how to use a freaking drill. And, and I work a lot in construction, people are going to kill me for saying that I'm a safety guy. right? <laughs> but, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> But just the fact that you taught yourself how to do that, and that was like healing for you mm -hmm. as an outlet. Um, do you ever look back and just say, man, how the heck did I get here? All the time. All the time I look at things and think, like even the workbench behind me, if you saw mm -hmm. my terrible sketch, I, like I had an idea in my head and I sketched it, and I'm like, you know what, it turns, it turned out. For, I always joke, like, imagine what I could do if I knew what I was doing. Ooh. Like, that's my standing joke. Because I really just wing it. Uh -huh. I've never followed a plan, like any kind of woodworking plans. I just, like, I'm like, you know, that turned out pretty darn good for not having a clue. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, all the time I think, how did I get here? How did I go from not knowing how to open the miter saw and almost giving up on the What's first- What's a miter saw? The miter like a I'm chop kidding. saw. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, okay, yeah, it's totally yeah. okay. A lot of guys, I think this is an issue. 
Um, a lot of men feel pressure. They feel like mm -hmm. because they're men that they are expected to know how to, and a lot of them confide in me and message me and say that they feel, um, what's the right, not inferior, but they're embarrassed. Yeah. Because society looks at them and just assumes you're a guy, you know how to pick up tools and use it. Like they're, yeah, and, and like they're weak. Uh, I think the other day at work, I had, I had uh, an incredibly strong woman explaining to me how a different process is as far as like manufacturing. And I just listen and I, I embrace the fact that, you know what? Yeah. I might not be like the typical male or whatever, but I, I embrace the fact that I don't know how to do a lot of stuff that, that is, you know, considered quote unquote uh, manly. And I'm cool with that. I can make you yeah. a bomb lasagna, right? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, and that's yeah. the thing that people need to remember is we all have different talents. Right. Right. You know, I, I built this and didn't know what I was doing, but you might have the best singing voice ever. And I might look at that and go, oh my gosh, I, you look like you'd be able to sing. I don't know why. No, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> sing. I'm good at talking. <laughs> you sure you don't sing? Not even in I, the shower. No, uh, you can't carry a tune. No, I feel no. like you're musically inclined. I promise I'm not. Ask my wife. She'll tell you. <laughs> I suck at it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I suck at it. Speaking of um, speaking <laughs> of um, music, uh, my daughters. I told my daughters that uh, that I was going to be talking to you, and I said she has over a hundred and eighty four thousand followers on TikTok, and yeah. their eyes went. They, they went. What? Because usually I tell them I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> I'll be like, I'm get, getting ready to talk to this person and that person. They're like, yeah, okay, whatever. But when I said TikTok, they instantly got pumped. Aww. They start, yeah. So one of them, they're following you right now, and, and uh, she was, yeah, she's a musician, and she's my my daughter Sanaya uh, and Mia, and they both like your um, the the one the one skit that you did with the. Uh, I forgot what it was, but you, you were making music. You're like, I think it was like a trombone or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah. There's like wood, woodworking clamp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They love, 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 love uh, that. How long did it take you to make that? That one video, believe it or not, it's usually the silly things that end up taking time. Um, and that one, it was really difficult because that, that clamp was brand new and uh -huh. it didn't want it didn't want to slide so I really had to focus and I was I was couldn't because I was recording with my phone I wasn't playing the music okay it was going in my head so I was like doo, 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 doo. yeah I had to I could come it in my head to myself yeah and I knew that it was important to and I think I kind of got like a life lesson from that because I knew it was important to not try to keep up with mm. the actual tempo yeah because once I recorded it I could speed up the video. So I thought, don't try to keep up with anybody. Just focus on hitting each point. That's a life lesson right there. You're dropping it gems. <laughs> yeah. So I try to, that's another thing. I try to find like a lot of life lessons and a lot of my work, which there are a lot of like, I can go, okay, that video taught me this. So that's my life lesson from that one is to not pay attention, not try to hurry to just yeah. focus on hitting each point accurately because then I could speed it up and then it turned out really cool. But yeah, that one took, I know over a half an hour and multiple times, multiple takes. Each video I do multiple versions of it and then I'll whittle it down when I'm editing and I'll say, okay, um, that one is probably the best clip of that. So you, yeah, and, you'll have to you, send me their names and your address. I have uh, little stickers. And I'll send a card. Okay. I have one with a ruler and it says girls rule. Ooh, so, they would love that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they would love that. I was getting ready uh, before this whole COVID thing. I was going to start taking them to the classes that they have um, at Home Depot so they could start learning how to do that stuff. Unfortunately, their dad yeah. can't teach him, but I figured we would, we would learn together. Just like with my son, um, I, I didn't know how to drive a stick. And I said, you know what? I don't. I want my son to learn how to drive a car. I don't want him to be, to have limits when it comes to like choosing vehicles like, like I did. And long story short, I said, you know what? We're going to make us 
learn together. So I looked yeah. at a YouTube video on the way to buy the car on how to drive a stick. And sure enough, looked at a YouTube video, looked at it again, looked at it again. And then next thing you know, I'm driving in the highway, um, driving down the highway, driving a brand new car in the stick, stick shift. I had never dr drove in one before, but it was, it was pretty incredible. So yeah, yeah, it's the That's things that awesome. we learn. Yeah, it's the thing. That's awesome. That and it's like once you're and you're like, I know for me, I'm, I can be intimidated by like the small, like something like that. And then once you do it, you're like, well, that wasn't so bad after all. I feel like a lot of times it's the fear of the actual thing and the anticipation that sometimes we talk ourselves out of doing something that, but we should do things that scare us because after we've gotten through it, we're like, oh, you know what, why was I, that was not that big of a deal. Right. So yeah, right. take those Home Depot classes with your daughters and then what a cool memory right. that you're making. No, I agree. I agree. You, um, again, I, I appreciate you doing this. It, it is such an honor to have you tell me your story and be able to share this with other people. Um, I was going to ask you, what's the deal with uh, the candy corn? You like candy corn? I do. You know what? I am the <laughs> least picky eater ever. I'll eat anything unless it's like really spicy and hot. I can't take that. So I, I just was, what was it? Why did I make that? I think I was scrolling on Pinterest looking for something else. I came upon candy corn projects like that and i'm like you know what i just got inspired and that's how i work i a lot of times don't that's know my what favorite word that day yeah <laughs> <laughs> i just like i'm gonna i saw it and i'm like you know what i can make that yeah and now people want to order those and i'm like are you I serious <laughs> yeah. that's i a already have a gazillion flag orders i'm like i can't take more orders so i might do some closer to halloween yeah. But yeah, I love I love candy corn. I love all kind of candy. I love all kind of food. Uh, me too. Me too. Yeah. You um I, I guess that's a good problem to have, right? To be in such demand that you're just overwhelmed with work to, you know, it's probably hard to catch up, I bet, right? It but, is, uh, but you know what? It could be inspiring for a lot of people because a lot of people are out of jobs or stuck at home or had to maybe maybe lost their job, they're home with the kids you can make money from home working for yourself. I love it. <laughs> All you have to do is try different things, put it out on Facebook or on social media, and you will be amazed at the people that want to buy what you're doing. So do you do, you do this uh, full time? I do now. I do now. I'm a full time flag maker. And that was not by choice. That was not by choice. I had a job my story is actually on YouTube. I did a story a um, couple years ago. Okay. I'm a paralegal. I, it's a long, it's kind of drama, but I, I had a job I loved. I worked with the grand jury. Okay. And that's how I got to know all the police officers because most of the um, witnesses coming in at, at the grand jury level were the arresting officers that would oh. testify for the grand jury. So that's how I got to, they're all my friends. I got to know them very well. And one of my good friends asked me to make a thin blue lion flag. So I did one for him. And actually the first, here's a life lesson for you. The first one I did, I just winged it. Cause of course, why, why follow a plan? So right. I just winged it and it was good, but it was a little out of proportion. So I thought, uh, I'll take that one into work. And I got the brilliant idea. Well, you know, people are going to see that it's out of proportion. I thought, well, I'll have all the officers when they come in, I'll have them all sign the lines. And that's what got them. They'd see it and they're like, do you know a guy that makes these? And I'm like, yeah, uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you say, Everyone I know a lady that them. makes them. Yeah. yeah. So um, anyway, that, that mistake turned into a business because they all came in. They all started requesting. They all started, you know, they're like, well, I kind of like one like that, but maybe a little bit different. And then they started coming with different designs. So all of my designs are named after the people that inspired them. Um, so the takeaway from that is that even mistakes can have a good outcome. Right. So that means that they're not even mistakes at all, right? No, they aren't. So anyway, I was doing very well. I love that job. I was very well liked. 
um, kind of a sad situation. I had a female boss that bullied me. <laughs> oh. And the better I did, the better I did, the more attention I was getting with my flags. I want a contest through DeWalt. The more, the better I did, the more I was a target. So it got to the point where I felt like I had to file a complaint with the county and I did win it. But um, she had friends that were in high places and I had to leave. I well, had to leave. Look at you now. Yeah. So now. I know it, I, it was a very painful, it still is very painful, but I, I believe there's a purpose in it. Um, and I will see, I, I always, I compare it to Joseph. Joseph was thrown mm. in a pit. If he could be thrown in a pit and look where he ended up second in, you know, command in Egypt, then what can happen to me? So right. I draw a lot of faith on, or a lot of, that gives me a lot of faith that it can end up well for me, even though I'm still going through some rough times. Um, it, 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 it'll end up okay. I think right. that happened for a reason. And I think one day I will think, yeah. Right. I like, um, I, I, I like the way that you phrase that. And I heard you say, I'm going through the rough yeah. times going through it. You're not stuck in it. You're going through it. And that, that to me, that says a lot about uh, you and your character. Um, one thing I noticed that you said, uh, I think it was on your, um, your TikTok profile. My daughter found this. She said, I'm a savage, crafty <laughs> with a ratchet. <laughs> I was like, oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> I heard that song and I always am one to change lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> Songs anyway, just to be funny. Yeah. Um, and when I heard that and I like it was blowing up on TikTok, that song, and I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm not, those those lyrics came to me and I actually went and created T shirts on Teespring because I saw a lot of things there and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna make make shirts because I that just was like it spoke to me. That's cool. <laughs> so have have you ever have you did a video with that song? I don't remember if I have, honestly. You know, you, you've made so many, I'm pretty sure you don't. <laughs> I think I would remember if I did, and I didn't. There are a lot of songs I won't use if I think that the lyrics are too bad. Ooh, yeah, and that's probably, that's probably one, right? <laughs> I don't know if the clip of that has anything bad, or it could be one that I've saved. I save a lot of them to my favorites. Oh, okay. Okay. And then I will circle back later. Like a lot of times I'll have, a, I'll hear a song that will actually inspire a project. Mm -hmm. I'll hear a song and I'm like, I've got to make something that goes with that. And then a lot of times I'll do a project and then I'll just go through that. I don't have an actual song in mind and then I'll match up a song that's in my favorite. So that could be one that I fa have in my favorites that I've not done yet. Or maybe I've done it and I've just done so many that I forgot that it's not standing <laughs> up. But yeah, I'll there are a lot of popular songs that I'm like, oh, I really like that. But I feel like that doesn't go. Um, or I'll try to bleep out. I just tried to bleep out. There was one. It was a really funny trend that was going on where it was like two guys talking to each other. It was like a frat house and they had the uh -huh. album in it. Yeah, And I tried my hardest. I think I spent over an hour trying different ways to bleep it out. Yeah. And I finally couldn't get it to do it. And I finally, like, I whistled over it and I coughed over it. <laughs> <laughs> how, how long does it take you to, uh, to actually do, do a video? Some videos, if it's a project, it can take an entire day because if it's a project where I'm working and building something, there's the actual mm. project where I'm videotaping it and then editing typically an hour. Okay. Typically an hour to edit, at least, at least. Wow. And then there's you, sometimes I throw like a hodgepodge things together. I'm like, ah, I'm not even, I wasn't even gonna do that. And then it takes off. Yeah, like, you are a savage. It takes video? me hours. It takes me hours to edit. I hate editing so much. I'm, I would pay somebody a thousand dollars to edit a clip, a three minute clip. That's how much I hate doing it. I mean, I hate it. <laughs> I don't hate it, but I, because I have often thought maybe I should hire somebody, but I'm such a, 
I don't want to say perfectionist because I'm not a perfectionist. I really like to be in control of my work. Yeah. Yeah. You, what would yeah. that be? Control freak? I wasn't going to say that, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought it, no, not a control freak. I mean, you, you have a vision, right? And, and your vision isn't going to be somebody else's vision, just like somebody else's vision isn't going to be your vision. And you don't probably don't want to go back and have them revise it, you know, 30 times. So yeah. I, I like that. I, I think that makes sense. That makes sense. I often feel like it's, it's just faster for me to do rather than explain it and then tell somebody, no, that wasn't the way I pictured it. Because I a lot of times have a very definite, I often think maybe I was meant to be a producer because mm. a lot, or a director, because a lot of times I have a very clear picture of how it should be done. Yeah. Wow. So that means you're, you're very intentional. Um, yeah. one, one thing um, as, as we close, because I don't want to take up too much of your time. One oh. thing that I like to... Go I talked oh. to you all day, but yeah, I know people are. I, probably I was going like, to say, you have to keep it. <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to say, I was going to say, don't tell me that because we'll go for two hours. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but one thing um, that I like to ask people, I love to ask people this because I get a bunch of different reactions. If there's anything that you can say to uh, people that have been in your situation or people that are going through the situation that you were in, what would be that one thing that you would tell them? That one thing that you would tell them? Don't give up. It gets better. It does get better. You might not believe that there will come a day where you'll laugh again, where you'll be able to hear a song and not bust out crying. It will get better. Even though you can't see it now, there's a reason for it. And it does. It might not all like the pain might still be there, but it, it won't be as intense as it is today. I think a lot of people think, oh my gosh, this is what it's going to be like forever. And it won't be. You'll learn to get through it and you'll maybe realize that the, and you'll see that you became a stronger person and there was a purpose for it. Wow. We're Thank here to you. learn lessons. We're absolutely here to learn lessons. And that's what it's about. That's the secret of life. I love it. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to You're me. You're welcome.